What's the number one cyber attack today? Well, according to the FBI, if you look at the statistics from last year, a $1 billion crime that's looking to double or triple into this year, into 2017, it's ransomware. And ransomware was made famous by an attack called WannaCry. You know, um, I don't know who names these. I think it's the video game culture that names these. It's also the video game culture that usually designs the ransomware attacks. And ransomware attacks, um, while they're horrible and devastating, also lend themselves to a slight bit of hilarity only because those who are designing these attack vectors are a little bit like graffiti artists who have their, uh, who tag buildings. They have their, their special tag that they want, and so they design these way, things in a way that are very noticeable. So a little, a uh, few statistics about ransomware. As I said, uh, it is now the biggest cyber crime out there. If you want to think in terms of fraud, there is no better cyber attack that is fraud related than a ransomware attack um, because of the way that the attack is constructed, because of the way that it leverages usually an email communication that fools a person into clicking on a link or opening an attachment that loads the malware, the malicious software, that then installs the ransomware and locks down your computer. For those of you who have heard of ransomware but don't quite know how it works, basically what it does is it reaches into your computer and encrypts your drive. So all of your information is scrambled and can't be read unless you have a special key that decrypts it. And the attacker is the only person with that key. And unless you have a good backup, you are not going to get your data back that's very difficult to decrypt if they use a very strong encryption. And you're probably not gonna have the funds to pay someone to go through and decrypt it for you, even if it is possible, as that's very expensive. And the attackers, because ransomware is a business, are very nice, they're very helpful. You can even log into a chat room and speak with your attacker. So you receive a screen that says you have been locked by ransomware, you will never get your information back. But good news, if you pay us in Bitcoin, we'll unlock your information. And you say, what the hell is a Bitcoin? And they'll explain what a Bitcoin is. And this is the link you go to, and here's how you buy Bitcoin, and here's how you transfer it um, anonymously to us so that we can send you back your decryption key. And you still have no clue. So it says, click here for chat room, and they'll explain it to you. Ransomware attackers have even become tech support. They've said, you're locked anyway. Give us access to your computer. We have all your files anyway. And we will decrypt everything for you. And they've reached out and done that. Because it's a business. They make a fortune off a of ransomware attack. If I ever wanted to go criminal, this would be my business. Because you don't even have to be a programmer. You can go onto the dark web and download a toolkit and become a ransomware attacker yourself. Don't do it, please. Bad thing to do. No, no, no. It, it, I always like to think of some clever vectors of ransomware. Here are a couple. The first is called popcorn. This is still my favorite. It's been my favorite for months. Popcorn puts you in this wonderful prisoner's dilemma. Well, it's a terrible prisoner's dilemma. Popcorn's like this, and they go after people who don't have a lot of money, college students, that kind of thing, people who are young and starting out. Uh, they only want a Bitcoin, maybe $150. And um, what it does is it locks your computer, and then like this popcorn pops, right? That's their you know, tagging. And then it says, you can use the good uh, response to get your information decrypted or the evil response. The good response is you pay them a Bitcoin. The evil response is if you send it to your friends, they give you a link to a, a link, and if you send this link to all your friends and two of them click and get locked by my ransomware and pay me, I'll unlock you for free. Now, don't raise your hands. How many people out there would think to themselves, hmm, who are the two people I hate the most? And you can become a hacker. That's popcorn. Resinware is the other one. Resinware is playing off the uh, Japanese anime culture. There's this uh, silly game called uh, Resin and it's impossible. It's one of those arcadey things where you have to shoot up a screen, and it, it, believe me, it, unless you really love this stuff, you're dead in two seconds. Uh, it locks your computer, installs the game, and loads it on what's called lunatic level, which is, it, it was impossible to start. No one can do this. I think like three people 
have passed lunatic level and they live in other countries and you'd have to go find them through YouTube. Uh, you have to get two, 200 million points on lunatic level and you get unlocked for free. So you play a video game to get your data back or you have to pay them. So your choices are pay them, be really good at video games, maybe you have a kid who could do it for you, or uh, go find some guy in some uh, stan who is willing to fly over and unlock you. Not gonna happen. So ransomware, serious problem with you know, solutions that we aren't quite figuring out yet. Um, you know, as I said, email is the number one vector of attack for ransomware. Uh, infected emails increased 6,000% using email as a vector from 2015 to 16. That means that email is so successful at fooling people that all the ransomware attackers just decided, this is the way I'm gonna do it. 59% um, of infections last year came from email. So, with that, what are some of the things you can do? Well, I'd like to talk about three, three things in terms of what you can do um, in acting and not reacting to the problem and getting ahead of the attackers. Technology, people, and process. Three things. Technology means that you have good cybersecurity. Cybersecurity that focuses, for example, on the endpoint, that piece of technology like your phone or your laptop or your server or um, thumb drives, those things that are closest to the human that is going to be fooled. And you leverage what's called zero trust. Zero trust is like having the best club in Hollywood. And in that club, no one's getting in past that big mean bouncer. It doesn't matter how good you look or how well healed you are, no one gets past. And uh, only those people who are on the list, only those programs, those executables that you want to run can run on your system, which is why you look at the endpoint, because if it can't run there, it is not going to spread. That's how you stop malware and non-malware attacks, right? This technology. People, you have to have people who understand the technology. If you don't have people who understand how your technology works, who can conduct forensics, who have visibility and analytics into what's happening, it's all a waste of time. And finally, process. Process is about training people. It's learning not to click on links, not to be John Podesta, not to open attachments that come from people you don't know. But it's also learning that fraudsters are out there and that we have to be aware in order to stop them. Everybody here knows about the CEO attack, where every, you know, certain people in an organization get an email, it purportedly comes from the CEO, and it says, there's a crisis, you have to wire money to this account immediately, or everything will go wrong and we're going to crash and burn and all lose our jobs. That pressure situation, and people will unfortunately do it. Um, we all know that, you train people, when you get that email, if you think it might be legitimate, pick up the phone, remember those things, and call the CEO. It's okay to do that. CEO has to be cool with getting those calls. Might stop massive fraud. So that training is important. Technology, people, and process.